We're about three months out from the all-important midterms, and Democrats who were hoping things would turn around by now are in for a rude awakening. Turns out the American people aren't feeling that great in Biden's America. A new poll found almost three-quarters of voters say the country's headed in the wrong direction. 58 percent say America's best days are behind it. That is an all-time high. And Fox News projecting Republicans to win the majority in the House by at least two seats. But there is one silver lining for the Democrats. Joe Biden is still on vacation. <laughs> Ever notice that the more out of sight Joe stays, the party does a little bit better? Well, 60 Democrats facing tough elections caught on, and they told the Washington Post Biden should keep his distance. Quote, few candidates said they wanted Biden to campaign for them in their state or district, with many not responding to the question at all. The Post also asked if candidates wanted Vice President Harris as a surrogate campaigner for the Biden administration and got the same set of unenthusiastic <laughs> responses. Ouch. And Democrats get even more cagey when the cameras are rolling. Watch. Would you want President Biden to come to Arizona and campaign with you? Hey, I'll welcome anybody to come to Arizona. That's well, not exactly an open invitation to President Biden. I want to be the face of this campaign, and I don't want any distractions. I am not talking about 2022. I'm not talking about 2024. <laughs> okay. I, I intend to do the campaigning myself. I am the candidate. It's my name on the ballot. Who was that last congresswoman? Abigail Spanberg. There she is, Dana. So it's really <laughs> awkward. Do you would you have a better set of talking points to advise Democrats to use besides those? Or is that the best they can I do? I think that might be the best they can do, but I think the journalists could do a little bit better in asking a follow-up question. Would you like President Obama to come campaign with you? Mm. And what do you think the answer oh, to that God, would be? That question. is good. That is absolutely <laughs> oh, yes, I'd love him. Please, like, we'll do anything. And then, then they could do a third. Do you want Michelle Obama to come? Oh, and, yes, and then that's definitely. like the universal <laughs> yes. Uh, the NBC News poll really sent shockwaves, but it shouldn't because these numbers have been the same. The media had written so many comeback kid stories that they believed that the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act was all of a sudden going to magically change things. Not only that, but the president signed it and he stayed on vacation. It, when you have an yeah. advantage like that, you press it. So you sign the bill, and then you start traveling around the country like they always say they want to do. They always say they want to get out in the country and talk to more people and see more people. They didn't do that. They went on vacation, and now what do we have? Then the news cycle changes. And now we're talking about the raid at Mar-a-Lago. Um, Ron Klain, the chief of staff, said that Biden was like FDR, JFK, LBJ, Eisenhower, and Bill Clinton because he passed a bill to give rich people tax credits and double the size of the IRS. <laughs> and I don't think that... That's going to fly with a lot of people. And come November 15th by, by Thanksgiving, you're going to see the media have to go back out in the country and interview all those people again and say, gosh, why didn't you change your mind about the direction of the country, even though the president passed the largest climate bill in history? <laughs> yeah, I don't think Bill Clinton wants to be compared to Joe Biden. I don't yeah. think he likes that at all. What do you think, Johnny Joey Jones, there's or just some, Joey Jones? There's some truth in that. I mean, he stuck around for too long and he's feeble. He's probably in office because of some cabal of, like, mafia uh, movement. Uh, he's probably, he's shown himself to be somewhat racist in certain ways. With Eisenhower, I think Eisenhower did a little bit better with China. And who was the yeah. other one, Bill Clinton? Yeah. He's certainly going to have a White House full of scandals. So there are some comparisons <laughs> there. Uh, but I think, I think it stops there. I think it stops with the negatives. Uh, listen, this is not a hard thing to understand. The White House has probably told these people, listen, this man cannot physically campaign with you, so don't don't entertain that. Oh, don't don't try to bring him down here. He can't do it. It's all I can do to ride a bicycle on the beach. To be fair, that's not something I could do. <laughs> uh, but when you want to talk about where Americans are, some of these polls talk about their, that they think America um, is worse than it's ever been. They think it's hit its peak and, and, is, and has been in a recession of just American greatness. You, you just look, go down the list. I mean, you talk about, okay, strong on defense. Well, Ukraine, Afghanistan, uh, the wokeness of the military. Nobody's excited about that. Even if you're not upset about it, you're not excited about it. You talk about inflation, all the different problems, and none of them have been actually addressed by at least this package. We're talking about workforce shortage, production deficiencies, import problems, regulated, regulatory costs, spending, spending, and oh yeah, spending, immigration, the border, and fentanyl. Those are two big issues that yeah. people are going to care about. And then we get down to crime, we're talking cashless bail, defunding the police, refocusing federal agencies on their political opponents, and then local law enforcement is left to do what the federal agencies should have done, so then they can't do the crime in their cities. And on top of that, you have Border Patrol and the FBI that, uh, that one, needs all the resources, and the other one is, is using it in ways that leaves us baffled. 
That's the legacy of President Biden, no matter how many Band-Aid pieces of legislation they hang their hat on. Republicans hung their hat on the Trump tax cuts. You know what? Democrats didn't see that as success. Don't ask me to see spending, spending, and spending as a legislative success. Just because Joe Manchin gave, gave the, the flip of the hand to, uh, Mitt, Ron, or to uh, Mitch McConnell doesn't mean that all of a sudden President Biden is the guy that can get things done. I mean, maybe Chuck Schumer is. Mm. Jones brings up an interesting point, <laughs> Campos. Hopefully a couple. This one I'm really into. <laughs> Campos Duffy. Excuse me, I Campos Duffy. Duffy. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> uh, love you, Sean. <laughs> He might not physically be capable of flying all the way to Arizona mm. or flying once he's over there all the way up to Nevada. Nevada, yeah. Nevada. Nevada. I mean, those are long flights that are very taxing for someone like that. Do you think he might not even be up to it? That's entirely possible. I mean, there's all kinds of video evidence we have of that. By the way, presidential comparisons, maybe they could campaign with Liz Cheney, who now says she's Abraham Lincoln. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's one way to look at it. I think part of it, um, you hit it on the head, Dana. It, you know, they can't go, he can't go out and talk about the Inflation Reduction Act and brag about it because they admitted after they passed it that it wasn't that, that yeah. it was a climate bill. And if they thought a climate bill or the Green New Deal was popular, they would have named the bill the climate deal or the Green New Deal, and they didn't yeah. because they know the American people don't want that. So now he's going to have to go around, and all of them, I think, are going to have a problem answering uh, to that bill because people did not want that. They Literally, the number one issue is inflation, which is why they named it the Inflation Reduction Act, but it doesn't do that. Um, so I think there's a lot of problems. By the way, Mark Kelly, all these people, they don't want him in the district because he's toxic. Nobody has had worse numbers than he has. Um, they're actually trying right now to pretend that they're moderates. So having Joe Biden next to him is not going to help. Um, the other thing is, even AOC doesn't want him um, in her district. And he's doing everything he wanted, um, she asked him to do, which is Pretty ungrateful of her. That is, she's very ungrateful. That's what people say. I didn't say that. <laughs> what about that number that's an all-time high? People think that America's best days are behind us. That's, where do you attribute that to, Harold Ford Jr.? People aren't happy. Um, I think, first of all, glad you're back. Thank I'm you. Glad to be around the table. Uh, been away a week myself. I missed you, too. <laughs> I'd, I'd say a couple <laughs> things. <laughs> I'd say a couple things. So sweet. Um, when you see the polls, <laughs> if you believe polls, you got to believe them when they're good and when they're bad. There's some good things in this for Democrats. There's some bad things. Without a question, three out of four Americans believe we're on the wrong track. Um, that has happened before. When President Bush was in office, there was a time in 06 when people didn't necessarily want him to come. President Clinton, people didn't want him in 94. I don't imagine many Republicans are going to ask President Trump to come uh, in the tough races, in the Senate and congressional races going forward. So that happens. The enthusiasm, however, is up. Good for the, but, but for the first time, well, just, I'm just, let's just stick with the polls for one second. The, the enthusiasm level has narrowed. Democrats are only two points behind Republicans mm. from three months ago. So the poll, poll we yeah. analyzed on the show before, I try to call balls and strikes. I pray that I do. And we were in a bad situation. But you have an enthusiasm level that is caught up. You also have the generic polling information, which is caught up as well. Two, inflation is flattening. May not, we, can, we can argue about it. Gas is below $4. Unemployment is at an all, at a, almost at an all-time low. Um, and... Whatever you want to say about this bill, it's going to allow for Medicare to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies, which we've never had before. We tried it when I was in Congress, which seems like a long, long time ago, but we weren't, weren't able to succeed in doing it. Furthermore, Joe Manchin agreed to this also because we're going to do more domestic energy production, including things that I believe and I think we believe around this table, fossil fuels. And there's a belief in my party, and I happen to agree, that we got to get greener, but we can't abandon fossil fuels as we try to do it. Finally, I'll quote Mitch McConnell. Republicans, I think, probably have a candidate challenge also with some of the Senate candidates. When you look at the fact that the Roe v. Wade or Casey v. Pennsylvania was overturned by the court, that clearly is a big factor. What I found also interesting, Dana, and I'd be curious your thoughts on this, the number one issue in this poll now, or at least one of the top two, voters had never cited this. It's threats to our democracy or on the minds of voters. Democrats are going to say that means if they don't like Trump, they, they believe what happened on January 6th is a rough, tough thing. Republicans might counter with that people don't like the way that they searched the president's home in Mar-a-Lago. We'll find out. One thing is for certain. Things have changed in three months. Polls at this point are not conclusive. They're instructive. Three months from now, if this poll looks like this, I think we'll have a different tune. And we might even be able to say with some more definitiveness what this may mean. Well, I don't know a single Republican that wouldn't want Donald Trump to come campaign for him. Maybe you can think That's of that exactly Republican right. in the break, but 
I can't think of one right now. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.